Next world, it's your boy AJ back again. It's playoff time. You know what it is. Hashtag we go hard. We're about to break down the Boston Celtics. But before we get started, if you like content like this, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any breaking Nets news. Now we're here to talk about the Boston Celtics led by Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. The Celtics stormed to the top of the East in 2022. Since January 1st, Boston has had the best record in the East as their 34 and 12 got them the number two seed. And we look at the statistically number 12 offense in the in the NBA, they're the number 14th in three point percentage. The Boston Celtics are number nine in three pointers attempted, so they take a lot of threes. Defensively, we all know that they're number one defense, they're the number four in the defensive rebounds, and they're number two in blocks. So the Celtics are a perimeter team. Their offense is ran through Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Terrific one-on-one play, but also a good balance of ball movement and three-point shots. They take a lot of them. They're not really a team that looks to punish you in the paint. They're more of a team that wants to swing the ball from side to side, score from the outside, then play amazing defense on the other end. When you look at their roster, everybody can hit a three. That's why the floor is so spread for JT and JB to go 1v1 because they can play five out. Now we look at their depth chart, the Celtics go about seven deep. They don't have a ton of bench power. They're actually 26 in the NBA in bench points. So they're actually pretty top heavy. Like I said, before they're a perimeter team, Al Horford, Daniel Tice can stand in the corner or wing and hit threes. Then their key guy off the bench is Derek White. He pushes the pace for them and scores. Then also Grant Williams and Pritchard also are guys who can come off the bench and spread the floor. Keep that spacing because Williams and Pritchard are good shooters from the outside. Aaron Naismith, we're probably not going to see him a lot. I doubt we'll see him a lot, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. But again, the Celtics want to keep it five out, floor spacing. It's all about spacing with them. Five out, floor spacing, and guys can hit shots, hit threes. Now, to me, this series is going to come down to three things. Role players, timely stops, and closing out games, coaching adjustments. Now, number one, role players. Which role players are we going to be the most effective, consistent, and stepping up? We know the stars are going to be the stars. JB, JT going to get theirs. Kyrie, KD going to get theirs. But which role players are going to push each team over the edge? For them, will Marcus Smart great perimeter defense and three-point shooting make a big impact? We know he's an elite defender. Will he be able to be that X factor? You know what I'm saying? Grant Williams, Pritchard Horford, are those guys going to get double digits on a consistent basis? You know, then for us, Bruce Brown has to have a great series for us. He has to be our version of Marcus Smart. We know Bruce is an elite defender. He has been crucial in pushing the pace, providing energy, and has become a really solid three-point shooter in the corner. As we, as teams will sell out to get the ball out of Durant and, and Kyrie's hands, we'll see a ton of doubles. And with Bruce being able to finish well at the rim and make the right decisions in that short roll, he will be crucial for us. Seth Curry, he's going to have to have a great series. He's going to get a lot of open looks. Also, Claxton, Dragic, Drummond, they're going to have to give us some type of scoring or defensive rebounding impact to push us over the hump in this series. So again, role players is number one, which will decide this series. Second, which team is going to make timely stops or timely buckets from game to game. I feel like in this series, it's so evenly matched, it's gonna come down to who can make a series of stops in the fourth quarter. You know, when it's 88-88, which team will close on a game to game basis? Uh, Who's gonna make the the stops? Who's gonna get those timely buckets and close? That will decide the series also. And then third for me is coaching adjustments. I've been telling you guys from day one, coaching matters in the playoffs, game by game. In-game adjustments are crucial for winning a series. Game plans are very important, and and the Celtics have a great head coach. We should know because he was with us last year, Coach Udoka. In my opinion, the Celtics have the better coach, but we have the best player. So it will be interesting to see which coach will make the better adjustments in this series. Lastly, I'll talk about what the Nets could do offensively and defensively to give us the best advantage. Now, offensively, first things first, we got to attack their switch. Bruce Brown said it best. 50. Uh, we got to be physical with them. Now they don't have Robert Williams, so um, 
they have less of a presence in the paint, uh, and, we, and we could attack Al Horford and, and Tice. Y'all heard Bruce. He wasn't lying. We have to attack Daniel Tice, Al Horford, now that Time Lord is gone. Now, offensively, we know the Brooklyn Nets are at their best when we have 30 assists. The ball is swinging from side to side. Everybody gets a touch. Now, the Celtics have their switch defense to negate that to force one-on-one ISO. Now, if they want to do that, we must attack their weakest POA defenders, Al Horford, Daniel Tice. These guys are not good laterally and will get cooked on the perimeter by KD, Kyrie, Seth, Goran Dragic so we must take advantage and the Nets did that a few times last time we played them as you look up at the screen here we see Kyrie taking advantage of Al Horford one-on-one also you see right here KD catches the ball on the wing with JT defending he calls out the screen takes advantage of their switching and gets Al Horford one-on-one again now also another offensive advantage I found in watching film is we could punish the Celtics in the paint again without Time Lord they are lacking in the perimeter and size wise like i said the celtics are not a big team al horford and daniel tice are around 6'9 we actually have the bigger team andre drummond 6'11 280 pounds could be another x factor in this series because we can punish the celtics in the paint if he dominates in the boards and can score down low it would be huge same with claxton if we can punish them in the paint this will lead to their guys getting in foul trouble which puts them at a disadvantage because the celtics have a weak bench claxton can flourish the series because again he's 6 11 he can guard one through five he can take advantage in the paint but with drummond he can do this but he can get exposed on the perimeter you know what i'm saying if you you can play drummond drummond can eat in the paint but at the same time on the defensive end he could get exposed because the celtics are a small ball team so nash has to go, do a good a job of managing drummond's minutes he has to do a good job of letting drummond eat in the paint but taking him out at the right times so he doesn't get exposed at uh, that five position on the perimeter because the Celtics are a small ball team. They like to go small. They are a perimeter team. Also, with this matchup, I think we should definitely see a lot of small ball lineups to match the Celtics. Hopefully, Nash does a lot of KD at the five or Claxton at the five. Just go small at times to match the Celtics' pace, match the Celtics' perimeter so when they switch everything, we won't be exposed by anybody on that perimeter. It'll be an equal five on five. Defensively, I think our best bet is to make the others beat you. I think the Nets should double team Tatum majority of this series, or at least every time he catches the ball, he sees two bodies. We can't let him get 50 or get going. We will live and die. If Marcus Smart goes nuclear or Peyton Pritchard, Grant Williams, let those guys beat us. Same thing with Jalen Brown. Make sure he sees two bodies and double him off pick and rolls or traps because we know defensively they're going to do the same with KD and Kyrie. Also, another defensive X factor is the one and only Ben 10. Will we see Ben 10 in this series? If we see Ben 10 in this series, he could change everything if he comes back healthy and makes an impact. You look at the screen right here. Look at these isolated numbers of Ben 10 guarding Tatum. He def gave him some problems holding him to like 30% from the field. Like you watched his film, he was just a menace to JT in the past. He just, you know, he did a good job of fighting over screens, getting into Jason Tatum's airspace, not letting him uh, get to his spots one on one. Again, with Ben Simmons, it could be the biggest X factor on this team because we don't know if Ben can come back 100% or he comes back, what makes an impact, it could really change the series for the better. But. I'm just going to go into this series like he's not coming back. You know, Shams reported that he's going to come back around game four, game five, game six. But again, I'm just going to go into the series uh, like KD has said before, go into the series like he's not coming back. Uh, but I think we can still have a good series. Now, my prediction for this series is Nets and six. But let me know in the comments how you guys feel about this series. Also, if you're a Celtics fan watching this, let me know your thoughts in the series. Um, this is going to be a great series. As long as we don't turn the ball over, as long as we keep pace, we ha we run our offensive sets, everybody touches the ball, I think we'll be fine. And if we play defense at a high, if we make timely stops in the fourth quarter, I think we'll be fine. Um, Nets and six, in my opinion. But it's going to be a great series. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Check out the description. I got more videos coming. Uh, follow me on Instagram at NetsKingdom711 and on Twitter. And we on TikTok. It's your boy AJ. I'm out.